Hello guys, this is Paul McCorder with TopTechBoy.com and we're here today with lesson number 11 in our incredible new tutorial series where you're going to learn Fusion 360 or you're going to die trying. <laughs> what I'll need you to do is pour yourself a nice tall glass of ice cold coffee. That is straight up black coffee poured over ice, no sugar, no sweeteners, none needed and as you're pouring your coffee as always i want to give a shout out to you guys who are helping me out over at patreon it is your support and your encouragement that keeps this great content coming you guys that are not helping out yet take a look down in the description there is a link over to my patreon account think about hopping on over there and hooking a brother up also, while you're down there, you'll see that I have affiliate links over to Amazon where you can buy some really nice filaments. So you guys taking these lessons, really appreciate it if you buy the, uh, the uh, filament from my links. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's jump in and talk about what I am going to show you today. And what I'm going to show you is my solution to the homework assignment that I gave you in episode number 10. And that homework assignment was to design these most excellent, these most excellent hex nuts. You guys be honest, leave a comment down below. If you were able to do the homework, leave a comment, I am legend. And if you were not able to do, do the homework, leave a comment, I folded up like a cheap Walmart lawn chair. Or you could be a third option, which is even worse than folding up like a cheap Walmart lawn chair. And the third option is I never even entered the arena. Okay, I've never even entered the arena. But hopefully you guys tried and either succeeded or failed. But never fear, I'm going to show you how to do it today. Now, I will admit this requires you to kind of think and explore and expand your skills. And it is acceptable if you just had uh, square you know, square edged corners on your nuts. But I'm going to show you how to do the full enchilada here, the way that I did it. And I'll also show you sort of a not quite as elegant as what I did it, but a simpler solution that's not quite as good as this. So we'll look at several different options. So what we will need to do is we will also need to come over here. I am printing these bad boys out as we speak. And again, I kind of got a little bit of a release on this first smear line. And uh, it looked like though that the first level after that was going down. Okay, so I decided to live dangerously and go ahead and try to print this even though that first level looked a little, a little iffy. I'm gonna see if I can kind of clip this off. There, I'm trying to at least get a little bit of that off so it doesn't interfere or cause a cause a problem with the print but anyway we're living dangerously and we're going to see even though i got a little bit of a glitch on that first smear line that went down i think we're going to be uh <clears throat> i think we're going to be okay so what i will need you to do is fire up fire up your most excellent fusion 360 and let's see if we can go in and let's see if we can model this thing so we're going to come in and we are going to do a new design and there it is in here we are going to create a new sketch we sketch in the x y plane the red green plane and boom fresh new sketch just waiting for us to design it so we will start with a what we will start with a hexagon and so we come down to a polygon I am just going to do because it matches my dimensions an inscribe polygon that is where the polygon is inside the circle you set the circle radius and then you it fits the polygon inside of it if you do a circumscribe it puts the polygon on the outside of the circle either one works but my dimensions are for the inscribed ones we will hover over the we will hover over the origin click once release the click drag out now this time i actually want it horizontally aligned and so i'm going to see if i can get it to snap there and you see i want that point to be along the x-axis i want the tip of the hexagon to be along the x-axis and you'll see why in a minute and i think we will set that to 25 millimeters just because we can that looks pretty good and that that thing is not fully constrained and probably if we put a parallel constraint 
so I get the I get the parallel not parallel I get the horizontal vertical and I put it on this leg and then boom that just keeps it from spinning around fully constrained uh-huh now let's give ourselves a construction line so I want to choose line up here I am going to choose construction I will hover over the origin until it snaps to the origin I will click I will come out and let's come out oh let's say 40 that ah, that's not going to be enough let's go 50 let's see if that's not a, that's probably not enough let's go 60 I promise that will be my last one okay that looks good let's get another polygon we will come up polygon again inscribed again we will hover over the origin click once drag up and we have got ourselves a construction which we don't want so I forgot to turn construction off come back and I will say polygon inscribe polygon will come down here hover over the origin it snaps to the origin click and then I want to come out 25 so I type in 25 what did it not like about that I click in 25 and there it is and now I try to get it to snap to I try to get it to snap to that construction line click enter it is not fully constrained but I think if I select this and tell that one to be uh, horizontal then boom we have a most excellent fully constrained uh, fully constrained sketch now we need to put our circle in and so this will be the nut this will be the bolt but they need both need the same circle hover over the origin click pull out and let's say I think 15 that is much too small much much too small uh, that is much much too small let's say uh, let's say if we made it 40 what does that look like that's too big let's go 35 man I am just really I must have put in like 3,500 or something yeah 4,000 that's not good 35 like that now let's zoom back in mm, that's too big I promise this will be the last one 30 that looks 25 okay 25 it is boom okay and I always like to get my dimensions out of my body even though it doesn't hurt anything I like to get my dimensions out of the body just to keep things nice and clean and so that was 25 I'll come over here select here come out 25 like the other one boom there it is hey man and what and fully constrained look at that if you think about constraints as you're designing it goes a lot easier in the original design I did I just copied and pasted the polygon that I designed at the or origin and the circle but then the constraints got messed up and I figure it's easier to draw it twice than to get those constraints all figured out again and so that looks good we're going to come up and we're going to come here I'm going to take this one which is the bolt and I am going to finish sketch which I should have done earlier so I clicked finish sketch now I am going to extrude I think that I am going to extrude that 15 that looks very good enter and now we will turn our sketch back on I'm going to select this one and I am I could type in 15 but I like better to come over here and say go to an object and then just pop it up to here and that way if I edit the height of the bolt the nut will follow along with that now what you guys learned last lesson we're not quite ready for yet I need to tilt this I forgot to put the pin for the threads so we're gonna come in we're gonna get this we're gonna extrude and I think I will do 35 how does that sound boom that looks pretty good yeah that looks really good I think okay now we got to put the threads on so I come over here I say create and I say create threads and then I say I want threads there I want to make sure to model them and I am using ISO metric profile and 25 millimeters for the uh, radius and that looks good and so then I am going to say OK and then boom I have those threads and now we're going to come over here to this and we are going to say create threads 
we want to make sure to model them. Same thing, 25, and boom. Now, what you learned in last week's lesson, if you just go in and print this on a 3D printer, what is the problem going to be? They are going to be too tight and not fit. And so what we need to do is we need to come in and we need to modify this thread. And I need to get the select tool and I need to select the top of the thread like that. I am holding shift down and I select the edge of the thread and I missed it. So I'm going to start over. I'm going to get the top of the thread. You want to make sure you're getting the face and not the intersecting line. And so here, boom. So you see the whole thing is blue. Now I need the underside of the thread. Hold shift down and I can click there. I have the underside. Now I need the inside, which is that gray area between the threads. I hold down shift and I select and boom, I've got the whole thing selected. Now I need to come in, I need to modify, and I need to do an offset face. And for my printer, your homework was to figure this out for your printer, but for my printer, the offset was minus 0.1 for a perfect fit, and boom. You see how that pulled everything in a little bit? Uh, again, a reminder from last week's lesson, you don't need to modify this one. You don't have to add tolerance to one and tolerance to the other. You just add tolerance to this one and it works. Okay, for a basic entry level solution to the homework assignment, this would be it. Okay, this would be your basic level. You know, you're a new guy, this would be okay. You would get a thumbs up for me if you did this much. If you are fully constrained, that is, I should say. But now, if you look at my solution though, that was not my solution. Did I do it? Yeah, there it is. What do you notice? These elegant rounded corners. Now, why do nuts and bolts have that little round on it, that little taper? The reason they have that is so a tight fitting wrench will seat itself. It gives it a little thing to start and then go on easily. So that makes it easier to get a wrench or a socket on your nut and bolt. And so how would we model that? Well, I'm going to start by modeling it what would be the easy way. I'm going to start by showing you kind of the easy way and that was you could do mod uh, you could do modify and you could put a fillet. Now remember in our earlier lessons I always said anything you can do at the 2D level do at the 2D level but I can't put this fillet at the 2D level because I'm not trying to round the profile I'm just trying to round the top and round the bottom so that I can't do in the sketch level so I call this up and I say okay fill it that and let's make it like let's make it two and see how that looks I think I need a little more I'm going to make it three okay then I'm going to select also this one well let me select more than one let's see maybe not maybe I'm going to have to do it separately maybe if I selected them holding the shift key so I'm selecting the edges not the faces like that and now I am going to create, I am going to create, I'm going to modify, I'm going to modify with a fillet and three is what we did and three is what we got. Now I need to come down and look at the bottom side and I'm going to do the same thing. I'll select them first. So I'm going to say take this one, shift 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 this one. Let's see if we can be a cowboy here. And let's see if we can do all of these on the underside like that. I think we got them all. Modify with a fillet and put a three on there. And uh, oh no, man, it's going to make me select them again. I shouldn't have selected them before I selected fillet. These tools in Fusion 360 seem to sometimes do one thing and sometimes do another. And I am not getting that selected there. Got it. I find one of the things in Fusion 360 that is hard sometimes is to select an intersecting line or select a point and I am struggling mightily with that. Okay, I think that got them three. Enter, boom. Okay, now we'll come over here and do this one. Do you guys have trouble doing the selection tool? It seems like it is wanting a level of precision that is more then my old mouse gives very easily. Okay, there they are. <clears throat> Modify with a fillet and then uh, we're going to say three and 
darn it, you got to do modify first. How, when am I going to learn that? Okay. There, 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 and we're going to give it three and boom, look at that. So now if we come back to the home view, we have a pretty nice looking, I'm going to turn the sketch off. I didn't do the top of this one, so I got one more. I'm going to learn this time that you do fill it first, and then I'm going to say I want this one, 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 and I want this one at three and enter. And there, I kind of have a nice looking rounded bolt, sort of, okay? This would be the first step up as far as a way to make it that you guys that maybe don't have a lot of experience could have done this, okay? But what do you know? Di what do you notice different about this one versus this one? What do you notice about this one? Leave a comment down below. What do you notice? I hope what you notice, I hope what you, you notice is, is this one <clears throat> is more elegantly shaped. And this one looks more like a real nut or bolt okay now how do you get that crazy profile well if you work in a machine shop you would see it right away but the reason that i gave you this homework assignment i wanted to see if you could think about it and figure it out it's very easy to get this shape if you see what the shape is and what it is is imagine if you put that bolt in a lathe and if you came in with a lathe tool and cut, it's going to take the most off of what? The most off of the corners. And it's going to take the least off where? At the flat spot there. Okay, so what this is, is this is just a lathe function on a polygon. Okay, and that's probably how they make real nuts and bolts. <coughs> and that's probably why you get this shape. But what you've got to be able to do is you've got to be able to look at a shape like this and see that is just a constant cut of a strange shaped polygon object. So how would we do that? Well, we're going to come in up here and I'm going to click undo until all of those things go away. Okay, I think they have all gone away. And now I'm going to show you how to do it. We are going to create a new sketch. Okay, but this time, instead of designing in the XY plane, we are going to design in the, uh, we are going to design in the XD plane. And I need to turn that body off to make sure, I need to turn this body off to make sure that I get the green blue plane, the XZ plane. No, I'm sorry, I misspoke the red blue plane. The XZ plane is red blue, which is this right here. And I got to kind of get it kind of carefully and boom, there we are ready to draw. Now, the first thing I'm going to need is a construction line. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to draw a construction line from the origin and then see if I can get it to pop right there to that radius, okay? And it looks like that is going to work, all right? And it was a construction line, so that worked. And then I'm going to need to draw a second construction line. <clears throat> and that second construction line is going to start where this one was. And I want to keep watching to make sure I'm fully constrained. I'm going to come down here over that point, click. I'm going to go up. And how far did we extrude this? We extruded it how far? I believe 15. Okay, and then boom, that is a construction line, so that is good, and now I'm going to get this out of my way. What I am going to do is I'm going to create a little triangle, and then that triangle I'm going to spin around, and I'm going to cut that bolt. We are going to cut that bolt, but we need to make a little shape to cut into it. So I will get the line. This time I want a real line. I will start here, and I will come down by three millimeters. I want to make sure I'm at 90 degrees and I come down three, enter, and I am remaining fully constrained. I'll get this out of the way. Now I'm going to start up here and I click on that point and then I come over. 
I get it at 90 at uh, zero degrees okay or 180 degrees it's saying you know what that means okay three that's just spun over and then enter we are still fully constrained and now I am going to finish my triangle with another line if I cl if I snap to that one and snap to this one it is fully constrained and I can define two sides of a triangle but I can't set a dimension for the third side the third side is a driven dimension and therefore you don't need to put it in in fact you should not put it in and it saves you a little math and boom I have a little corner now if I was really a master at fusion 360 I would take this I would mirror it up and then I would copy it down but I think I could draw it again quicker than that so I will come up how far three enter okay and now I will come over with another line these are real lines these are not construction lines I will come over three and enter and now I need to finish it this one if I snap to these two points they will be constrained and I will not indeed oh man that was very very bad undo that scratch that I need it to be a mirror image so here I start here and I snap I come out three and I snap okay and now I finish it up like this make sure to snap to that point okay I got it snapped how do I know it is fully constrained now let's see I need to come over here and I need to do the same thing so I'm going to turn that body off okay I know I shouldn't do this I know I shouldn't do this but I can't help it I'm going to just see if I can take that and if I can copy it okay and then if I can paste it okay and then if I can get it and move it over here and let's see if I'm gonna move it over here how about that okay and now I'm going to say okay okay and now I'm gonna see if I can snap this point to this point with a coincident snap and if this brought over the constraints this should work and then if it doesn't then I will rue the day that I ever tried to do that but boom look at that now if I turn those bodies on what do I have I have a little tool that I can do a cut with okay I have a little tool that I can do a cut with okay how am I going in and out I'm just spinning the scroll wheel so what do I want to do I want to finish the sketch okay and now what I want to do is I want to create a revolve okay now what profile do I want to revolve I got to select it I don't know I can't select it through there so I have to turn the body off I want this and I want this okay and now what do I want this I have to select the axis okay the axis would be why am I not seeing my axis I am not seeing an axis there maybe I should turn my body back on it is not showing me the x-axis should be there so let me see if I ah okay you come under origin and I want to see that z-axis so I turn it on where I can see it hopefully hopefully won't let me see it let me let me cancel this and see if I can turn that z-axis on why does my z-axis not want to show oh there it is it's, it is showing okay that's off you don't see it and then that that is crazy it shows it when I hover over it but it doesn't want to show it okay let's see if we can get it it looks like it's staying there but you got to get the z-axis to show now let's carefully turn that body off this is acting kind of strange let's turn that body off body is off let me select this that and that okay now I'm going to come up 
and I'm going to say create this. Okay. And so what does it want? It wants the profile. So I want that profile and then I want this one as a profile. And then I want to select the axis. So when I say select the axis, now I see my Z axis. I want to revolve around that. Now, what do I want? Do I want a new body? No. No. Do I want to join? No. What do I want? I want to cut. Okay. And uh, let's see. objects to cut. Ah, oh, maybe I need to turn that body back on where you can see it. Yeah, there it is. And then it did a crazy big, it did a crazy big. Okay, let's cancel that whole thing and let's start over. So I am going to say I want to revolve. Okay, now select the profile. I want this and I want that as a profile. Now I want to select the axes and I am going to select this as an axis. Now that is looking good, but what do I want a new body? No, I want a cut. All right. And now object to cut, maybe I can select that. This is quite perplexing. Let's see what we got here. I got that. I got that but it never got the body to cut. So let me try this again. Guys, this worked so perfectly the first time, but if I have these problems, likely you're gonna have them. So we are gonna say we want this. And right off the bat, I'm gonna say I wanna do a cut, okay? And now what do I wanna cut? Let me select the profile first. So I'm gonna select this profile and that profile. I have two profiles. I want it to be a cut. Now I select the axis. I want to very carefully select that as the axis. Okay. Now it needs a body to cut. So now I'm going to turn that body back on where you see it. And there we have it. If you guys see what I did wrong the 17 times that I messed up on this, and hopefully you saw I was selecting as the profile, the profile, I selected those two little triangles. And now I'm going to say, okay. And Shazam! Look at that. I'm not going to call my magic myself the magic man because I botched that one pretty good. But Fusion 360, sometimes it's just like I'm sure I did things right and it doesn't like it. But to cut a body, the body has to be visible. That's one thing that we've learned. All right. Now I've got to do the same thing over here with this one. So I'm going to turn that body off. I'm going to turn that body off. And then I'm going to come over to the front view and then I'm going to view the sketch. I've got that. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to say create. I'm going to tell it right off the bat that I want it to be a cut. Okay. And now I need to select the profile. I need to select that as a profile and select that as a profile. And now I need to turn the body on. Okay and I say select the axis. Now what is my problem? I don't have an axis here. All right, I don't have an axis. What are we going to do? We are going to put an axis right here coming up. How do we do that? We say we want a construction axis. We want the construction axis to be a cylinder or a cone. And if I selected this, it would just put an axis where there's already one. But I am going to turn the body back on. Okay. And I am going to select this. Select that. How about if I tell it this down here? Man. Okay, let's see. Let's turn the body on. Let's go to a good view. Okay, and let's say construct an axis through a cylinder. Axis through a cylinder. Okay, let's say. What if I select that? Okay, there. I selected it by kind of clicking on the inside of it and it knew that that was cylindrically in shape. Okay, so now we're going to come back to front. Now I have an axis 
or a construction line that I can spin around. We are going to turn body one off. That was body two. We're going to turn body one off. I'm going to click off of that. Now, what do I want to do? I want to, I want to modify with a, a, uh, rep, a revolve. I want to revolve that. Okay, right off the bat, I'm going to tell it that it's a cut. And then what I want to select are the faces that I'm going to cut that and that I'm going to cut. Now it wants an axis. This time we have one. So I say go around, select, go around that. And now it's going to go around 360 degrees. Let's turn the body back on. Okay. And there it is. And we say, okay. And boom, look at that. Okay, guys, do you see this? Give me some feedback back below. Was that homework too hard? Did some of you guys figure it out? That is just looking pretty darn neat to me. Now we're going to come over here and we are going to, we're going to come over here and we're going to look at the print that's going and you can see that the print is looking really good. I submitted the print before I did this design and I apologize. I kind of botched that first revolution and it's, Fusion 360 is very specific in how it wants the order. Sometimes you can select a face and then go select the function you want to do. Sometimes you've got to select the function and then go in and do the faces you want to do. I think, uh, I think that this print is looking really, really good. Let's see if I can look through a couple of things here as we are watching that print and see, uh, see what we've got we can come back over here and we can check the river cam out for a minute so what I, what I want to do is I want to get feedback from you guys whether that was too hard or not we're gonna have one more segment next week's lesson we are going to do a knurled round one and so that is going to be your homework for next week what I need you to do is to go back and look at those round uh, those round nuts and bolts that we created here and what I want you to do is I want you to put on here a knurled pattern you know the little roughness on it where uh, it's got basically crisscrosses going up and down and it gives your thumb if you want to have a hand tightened a hand tightened uh, round <clears throat> nut and bolt you can put knurls on it to give your thumb something to hold on to and so that will be your homework for next week is to make a knurled a knurled uh, nut and bolt and what I'll do is next week I will show you that uh, that assignment guys I am kind of struggling as I think through these lessons these lessons are kind of hard for me to do because I'm having to find a balance between teaching you about the 3d printer and teaching you about fusion 360 right now I've done several lessons on Fusion 360s. The guys interested mainly in 3D printing start getting a little restless, but then when I do three or four or five lessons on the 3D printer, the Fusion 360 guys start getting a little anxious. But understand what I'm trying to do is to show you how to design with printing or manufacturing on a 3d printer in mind and that's why we're kind of going back and forth and back and forth i'm also thinking about having a separate set of 360 lessons that are not in a class format where i do 30 minute or hour long lectures i'm thinking about making a fast hitting set of lessons which are called top tips in under two where i make two minute videos that show you how to solve common problems that you have in fusion 360 so like if you're working in Fusion 360 and you're thinking, oh, wow, wait, how do I, you know, how do I get, I can't move this thing off the origin. What do I do? Or, hey, you know, my, my, uh, my threads aren't fitting. So I'm trying, I'm thinking about maybe doing like 50 real quick videos and I won't do premieres. I'll just release them. And that way, if you guys have a problem, you can go back to those quick tips or other people that don't want to take this whole series of classes can just go in and do that. Give me some feedback. Are you guys going to get annoyed if one day you come in and you've got 50 notifications from me of little quick tips of how to use, use Fusion 360? So give me feedback because really 
I'm trying to make these videos to be useful to you. And, uh, you know, therefore I need your feedback. If I'm doing things too much Fusion 360, not enough printing, should I have maybe made this two separate classes? I was thinking about making it two separate classes, but then the thing that we have to deal with there is we have to deal with the fact that the things that I'm teaching you in Fusion 360 would not, they would be like disconnected from the printer. So let me know if I'm kind of on the right track here or if I've gone way off base with this. But what I want to do is I want to pause the video for a second, but I will come back and then I want to see if these things actually print right. And so what we will do is we will look, take one last look. I got some white birds back in the background. Uh, it looks like it's the middle of the day here, so probably the fishermen are having lunch. Lunch. They go out early, they put their nets out, and then they come back, and then they go out in the evening and, and pull them in. And so this time of the day, sometimes we don't see a lot of fishermen. But I will take a pause, and we will come back later as, these, as this print is almost done, and then we'll see how it works. Okay, so hold your breath, and I will be back in what to you is about one second, and to me is going to be about 45 minutes.